Super Potato is legendary in the Japanese game collecting community, not only because of the rare stuff that they have there, but also the extremely high prices that they charge, not only on games, but on consoles. We are going to be looking at some of the rarest and most expensive video game consoles, not just in Japan, but in the world. I'm really excited to show you some consoles that are complete in box that you just never see anywhere else. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, what does Super Potato have in store for us? Now, we looked at some of the basic consoles over there. Oh, no, we're going to be looking at Famicoms already. Interesting. Okay. Oh, yes. All right. So this is the regular Famicom. This is the basic Famicom that was released in 1983. It uses an RF switch. And so you can see there on the label, it does not work with composite video. That means you are plugging this into like the coaxial plug on the back of your old television. Although I think theoretically you could plug it into your HGTV. I don't know if that thing's gonna work. And there are models and hopefully I pull one of them. I can't remember if I did. This is $50. There are modded ones that are sold in Akihabara. This one is the OG model. And then on the left, no, that's a yellowed one. Look at that, only $3 less. So on the left, that one's going for $49. The one on the right is going for $52. But now here, yes, this one has been modded. And that's $100. So you're paying, you are paying twice as much to use component, or sorry, composite out of an original Famicom. Now you can also get the AV Famicom, which was released in like 1993. I think like 10 years later, it, the Famicom had a really long lifespan in Japan, and that's going for $130. The controllers are not hardwired. That's the other thing you need to know about the original Famicom, is that the controllers are hardwired to the system. Unlike the AV Famicom, where you can actually, you know, plug the controllers in and out. I think they actually both use the same power supply, actually. And then we have a Super Famicom here. Notice it only seems to come with the controllers. This one, only one controller, going for 45. You could find in, in Hard Off, in the suburbs of Tokyo, you can find these for like, you can find complete Super Famicoms for like 45 bucks, probably less than that. No, no power cables or anything with those. How interesting. And then the, a, the, the Famicom Twin or Twin Famicom, I love this red. I do not love the price tag though. But then again, this has been fixed. So something you need to know about the Famicom disk system. Let me get to that. Sorry, I'm, I'm, all, I'm scatterbrained. I'm all over the place. First, you're probably familiar with the Famicom. Then you might be familiar with the Famicom disk system, which was you can see there at the top left of your screen, those stacks of red and black systems. Those are disk drives that plugged into the Famicom. What the twin Famicom does is it combines in one system, a Famicom cartridge reader with the disc reader. The problem with disc readers, and this is true of both twin Famicoms and just regular Famicom disc systems, is that the drive belt is notorious for having melted over the years because it was just like basic plastic or rubber. But what Super Potato is pretty famous for is they will actually fix their twin Famicoms and their Famicom disc system, so you don't need to worry about replacing that drive belt. The twin Famicom, you can sometimes find it in a broken capacity, meaning that the disk drive doesn't work, for like 50 bucks, and then you can replace it yourself. It's just a pain to do. Or, and this is actually not terrible, I've seen them go from anywhere from $150 to $200. You could probably find it at a place like Trader for $150, but look at how many they have. And this actually has everything. That's got It's got the AV cables, the power supply. That's a big deal because the twin Famicom has a unique power supply. See, there's the OG Famicom disk system. 70 bucks, 70 bucks is a bit high. It's a bit pricey. And then the black one. I actually have one of these black ones on the right, but the orange one does look really cool. And then there's all the cables. These are the cables you're gonna need to play your AV Famicom or your Super Famicom on a modern-ish television. See, they're going for eight bucks, which is not terrible. That's about what you'd pay for. Yeah, I mean, 10 bucks is about what you would pay at a hard off. And those are samples, by the way. They have more of those behind the counter. They don't want to stack them up, obviously. 
Now this is, this really blows my mind. And I often talk about on this channel about how expensive Super Potato is in terms of the games, but we haven't really talked about systems. What we're looking at is a complete Famicom. So it's got the RF switch, the AC adapter, and the system itself with the manuals. This is going for $240. That is an insane price for a Famicom. I went to hard offs in the suburbs and they have the same thing, the same thing you are seeing here, a complete Famicom, complete in box for $70. And this is one of those instances, I've often talked about how games, it may not be worth it to like trudge it out to the boonies in order to get games. If you want complete in box systems, you are gonna save so much money and have such a better experience by taking the train out to the suburbs and getting those boxes. It's gonna be a pain to carry those things around. So maybe factor that in too, but you know, bring a big bag. They're not that heavy. It's not that annoying to carry around a Famicom complete in box. Here's a complete box disc system. These things are heavy because those disc readers, those drives are really heavy. Actually, it's like 77 bucks. Not terrible. How much are the Super Famicoms? 100 bucks. That's twice as expensive as it should be. It should not be that expensive. Again, go to hard off, buy it for 50. And then here we go, the AV Famicom, 160. For a while, the AV Famicom was really expensive, but now you can find these complete for like 80 or 90 bucks. They're not, they should not be $160. It's cool to see, and a lot of this is going to be cool to see. Like, you do not see Core Graphics 2s for the PC Engine. You just do not find these completed box. 180 is steep, but then again, you don't see it. They're hard to find. That's the orange one. I don't know what the difference is between the orange and the blue one. But, ooh, how much is this? All right. Hold on. I've got to, I've got to like, zoom in. Oh, no, it doesn't have... It's missing something, but I'm not quite sure what. This is a Turbo Duo. This is the PC Engine Duo. This is notorious for bad capacitors, so I don't... It does not say if their capacitors have been replaced or not. So you're taking a 200, very nearly $270 gamble on this system. They probably tested it, but have they tested it long enough? Because oftentimes what happens is on the Turbo Duos, you can play them for like five minutes and the capacitors will have built up enough charge to be okay. But after that five minutes, the CD audio will cut out and you're like, oh boy, we're, we're, we're bad news bears. PCFX, two, $300, man, I remember... I cannot believe I saw this one day for like 70 bucks and I didn't buy it. I can't believe it's $300 now. That's insane. Ooh, and then the ROM 2. What is this? I don't think I've ever seen this before. What is that? The ROM 2 amp. That was probably like $300. Oh, here's the Duo R. See, if you want to get a PC Engine Duo, get this. Don't spend $480 like Super Potato does want you to spend on this. Find one loose for like 100, 150. Wow, wow, wow we. Wow, they've got a duo in the box as well. Oh, here's the Twin Famicom complete. That's $550? No way. It's cool you you don't often see it but it's not a $550 system complete. Then how much do they want for the duo complete? 350. 350, not terrible. Not terrible. Definitely seen it more expensive elsewhere. But man, that twin Famicom. Woo! Whoa, boy, is that expensive. What is this? Oh, the PC Engine shuttle. $500. Wow. I don't even know what the difference is between the shuttle and the regular PC Engine. I'm pretty sure they're the same system. Someone will have to correct me. We've got a Master System going for $200. Master System did not sell very well in Japan, so they're very hard to find. Here we've got the CD base unit, the Mega CD2, $200. Wow. Mega Drive stuff, oh, the Wonder Mega. $400 for a loose console. 
it's one of those things you don't see it. You don't see these. I've only ever seen like one in the box ever. And then there's the Model 2. 100 bucks. These actually, you know, loose, 80 bucks would be a good price. So 100 is not like completely terrible. There's the Model 1. Model 1 has better sound, if I'm correct. It does have the the port, the the, the headphone port on the front. Giving I feel like the Model 1 has the advantage there. SG-1000, $380. Whoa. And like, where do we even see this? You never see that. I've seen maybe a couple of 3000s. I've never seen a 1000. And there's a complete master system. How much is that? $300? Wow. Wow. I did, I did have the opportunity to buy one at $200. I probably should have taken it, but I just, I don't know much about the Master System. Lethal Enforcers. How much is the Mega CD2 in the box? Does that include the system as well? No. No. So how much is it? $250. So it's not the price delta between a loose and a complete one. It's not, not that big. $250, that's, re that's reasonable for a, for a Model 2 Mega Drive uh, CD base. And then, ooh, the V Saturn, legendary. Actually, in a hundred bucks for a V Saturn, not bad, not bad by Super Potato standards. So the difference between the V Saturn and the Sega Saturn is just the shell. They, I love the V Saturn and its purple finish. The original Sega Saturn does look pretty cool. That's expensive, by the way. That was going for sixty. I actually saw they had one in a book off. They had a complete white one. Wow, look at that. Look at that one on the bottom. It's so yellowed. Going for 60 as opposed to that sort of nice conditioned white one right above it for 70. I've seen a complete one in Tokyo go for $20. It's possible. But then, but it's one of those things where, you know, you just have to be there. It's not something you see consistently. And 70 bucks for a Dreamcast? Not bad. Not bad given how the Dreamcast really went up in price the last couple of years. Now look at that steering wheel. 90 bucks for the white Sega Saturn. That's the Model 2 Sega Saturn, right? There's only just a slight variation between the Model 1 and the Model 2 Sega Saturn, if I'm remembering correctly. Here we go, the 3 do oh, yes, this is the Panasonic. There's like, there's a couple of different 3 dos that came out. The 3 do was released in Japan. I don't know if there are any Japanese exclusive games for it. This is the top loader, there is a front loading 3 do I don't know if we'll see it here. This is going for $88. I remember they couldn't give away 3DOs. No one cared about the 3DO in Japan for years. Except I think since 2017, I think it's become sort of a collectible item. So it doesn't surprise me. I've seen them, the prices on these vary wildly. I've seen them go from $50 to $100. It just depends on where you are. Couldn't recommend plumbers don't wear ties. Oh, there's the front loading. Yeah, 75 bucks for a Panasonic. 3DO for the front loader. I don't know if there's any like technical difference between the two of them. Here we go, Neo Geo. Here's a loose Neo Geo. How much is it? $440. Wow. That's expensive. I've seen them go at hard off for 200. You can actually this super potato where it's located in Akihabara, you can walk, I want to say about about 50 yards down the street. And you will find a complete Neo Geo at Trader for the same price. So sa save your money that way. But you do get the art. I mean, you get the stick. Although I think the box has the stick in it. Doesn't it? Oh, there's the, uh, the, the Controller Pro. I actually have one of these. 60 bucks. I think, yeah, that's gone up in price. All of the Neo Geo CD stuff has skyrocketed in value. It's, I wish I had collected it when I first went to Japan. I was really into it. Yeah, look at that. 500 so not that big of a difference. The Neo Geo Complete for 500 bucks, as opposed to 440 for the loose for the loose Neo Geo. And then here we've got, ah, yes, the Complete. The Complete 3DL. How much is it going for? 160 bucks. So that's interesting. Twice, twice as expensive for the 3DO, but the Neo Geo isn't that much more expensive complete. Is it because the Neo Geo people took better care of the stuff that they had because it was so expensive so they didn't throw out the boxes? So finding a complete Neo Geo is a lot easier than finding a complete PC or a, a complete 3DO? I'm guessing that's what, hap that's what happened. Very interesting. 
Wow, so I don't think I've ever really shown the consoles. I've very often focused on the games that they have at Super Potato and not the consoles. So it's really cool to see the prices on these things. And again, Super Potato, much like Retro Game Camp that we talked about in a video or two ago, the prices at Super Potato are high. They can get away with those prices because... They have that strong brand recognition of being the most open retro game shop to foreigners. And that brand comes at a price to the customer where you will be spending a lot of money if you just go to Super Potato and you don't go anywhere else. And I'm not saying you need to go out to the countryside. You don't need to take the train out for two hours to go to Hard Off to get some good deals on games. You can just walk down the street and go to Trader. See the prices there, and if the prices are more expensive at Trader, just go back to Super Potato and buy what you want there. For the longest time, Super Potato had some of the best prices on Sega Saturn games, and I think that still holds true to a certain extent today. But with everything, and I will say this about every shop in Japan, you need to make sure that you look around, because what you want to buy is most likely going to be cheaper somewhere else. It's not always going to be the case, but it will usually be the case. But then again, if you don't have time and you're just looking for something rare, like not every shop is going to have complete in-box 3DOs. Those are hard to find. Complete in-box Neo Geos, difficult, not impossible, but difficult to find. Those controller pros, hard to find. So if you are in Japan for just a couple days and you need one of these things, you're probably going to save a lot of money buying at Super Potato rather than buying on eBay, at the very least, considering the eBay markup. Again, not always the case, but it's pretty common. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. If you would like to see exclusive videos of game hunting in Japan at places like Super Potato, Bandarake, Retro Game Camp, you can head over to patreon.com slash jcontra and get access to exclusive patron-only content over there and help support the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time and mahalo. If you'd like to see exclusive Japanese game collecting videos and have access to polls that help decide the future of the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash jcontra.